Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to NPTEL the national program on technology enhanced learning these are video lectures being brought to you by the Indian Institutes of Technology and the Indian Institute of Science. We are in module uh, 4 and which is entitled culture industries, cultural forms. Um, we are now in the third lecture entitled media. You will recall that the last two lectures were devoted to culture industry and the smallest unit really of cultural forms which is the commodity which we call the uh, you know equivalent of the molecule in science. As always let us do first a recap of what we did in the last lecture. The last lecture was um, in, in, in the last lecture we talked uh, about uh, culture industries and that culture was in the service of capitalism and that it perpetuates the capitalist ethos. We also looked at uh, that aspect from the point of view of the commodity. We saw that after Marx the commodity has two kinds of values which is the use value or utility of the commodity and its exchange value that is uh, the value it has as something that is exchanged in the market. We also looked at a very important term not only in Marxism, but a term which is applied today to cultural studies, various aspects of cultural studies, namely the, the idea of commodity fetishism and we found the commodity fetishism is a term that was given to us by Marxism and we found that commodities in this um, understanding have a surface uh, appearance a very attractive sur surface appearance, but that really masks the underlying foundation or underlying system of exploitation of the laborer. Okay? So, commodity in commodity fetishism surface appearances mask or obscure the exploitative relationships in production. Then we also found through Chris Barker um, what we could say on meanings in commodities and we find that meanings in commodities arise from two aspects that is their design and production um, which lead which are modified okay, according to needs which are modified and in their modification they give new meanings to commodities through the representation process. And finally, we saw interestingly how Jean Baudrillard adds another aspect to the value and, uh, you know of commodities that was hitherto given by Karl Marx and the, uh, he said that commodities not only have use value or exchange value, but also something he calls sign value. Okay? So, sign value gives symbolic meanings uh, which are also a characteristic of commodities which were not really uh, you know which were not really extended or explained. Um, um, uh, you know explained in at least in the way in which cultural studies does today. Therefore, commodities are no longer really commodities. It is not that they are not material tangible objects, but commodities are now commodity signs. Okay, commodities are material commodities all right, but along with them their sign value becomes immensely important. So, well now the lecture today is on media and uh, in the beginning I would like to state that this lecture is general in nature. Okay? You too would be aware of the fact that media is something that you know you could really devote an entire course to media. You could have 40 lectures only on various aspects of the media. right? So, as we have done with other lectures, other topics what we are going to do here is we are going to look at media from a cultural studies perspective. Media studies is an area of study all right, it is a, it's a, uh, it's a very important burgeoning area of study, but we are going to since our course is entitled cultural studies and we are looking at all aspects of culture through the methodology of cultural studies, what we are going to do is similarly here look at media from a cultural studies methodology. Okay, as always let me declare the key source texts in this lecture which are Chris Barker's cultural studies theory and practice, Chris Barker's the sage dictionary of cultural studies, 
uh, Minakshi Durham and Doug Douglas Kellner's edited book, Media and Cultural Studies, which is the main book really uh, for this lecture, and Toby Miller's edited uh, Companion to Cultural Studies. Fine. Now, we are first going to define media and by media, media could, what is media? Media, you're talking, when you talk about media, you're talking about a medium, okay? A medium through which something, a message is given to you. So, very broadly speaking, okay, uh, anything really, any act of communication which goes through a medium is referred to as media, media being the plural form of of uh, medium. That is why when we say medium, media, we usually should say media art, but uh, anyway for convenience sake, I would refer to it as a singular. So, when we talk about media here, we are really referring to mass media. Okay? So, Barker says, let us read from him, the mass media are those institutions of communication such as newspapers, magazines, television and the film industry. So, what falls under mass media? These are as we saw newspapers, uh, the film industry, magazines, televisions etcetera and what is their role or function that produce and distribute texts on a large scale. Now, this is important in the context of capitalist modernity. We shall see a while later that by media we simply, it never meant only mass media as we understand it as a television uh, for instance or films. But if you are talking about mass media, then mass media has to happen under a capitalist modernity, right? There has uh, you know to be certain characteristics, there have to be certain characteristics. You will recall all this was discussed in the first lecture when you talk about culture industry and we also said that culture industry is uh, really a new term to refer to the mass media, okay? So, whereas in the first lecture we talked about the industry aspect of it. In this lecture, we are going to talk about um, media forms in general and the next lecture is going to, uh, to be devoted to one media form which is the television. Okay? So, the mass media therefore, are all these things which have to be produced and consumed under a capitalist modernity. The functions, let us read again, the functions of the mass media might be seen and th as those of providing information, entertainment and education. So, let us look at it in this diagram. Therefore, we have mass media are the institutions of communication. Okay? Remember, these are, um, these, this is a very important point. We are not only talking about media forms. Media forms come to us through certain institutions. Okay? So, institutions of communications that are there in capitalist modernity and whose main function, functions are information, the, the dissemination of information, uh, entertainment and education that is the uh, uh, the acquiring of knowledge. Okay? So, these are the functions of media as given to us by Chris Parker. Fine. As I said, we would talk about uh, mass media uh, and say that mass media did not happen only in, in capitalist modernity. It has a history. It may not have been uh, early, in early on in Europe, particularly in England. It would not, um, uh, may not have taken uh, or may not have happened uh, you know, uh, or taking the garb of capitalist modernity or the characteristics of capitalist modernity. Nevertheless, like all media forms um, and uh, all cultural forms really, media also had a history. So, in the 15th century, okay, with John Gutenberg, uh, many of you are aware of this, we have the printing, uh, printing press. Okay. So, with the printing press, what kind, uh, what kind of media you know, that it was also medium, right? So, you were printing, you were uh, for the first time you were printing texts which were text books which were for wider uh, dissemination, right? Uh, the, you, a growing public, at least a public that was beginning, you know, would eventually grow in the 17th and 18th century to large proportions. The kind of texts that were there in this time, please look at this slide, are religious, literary, medical, and legal texts. The, the nature of the texts were these and uh, by simply looking at the nature of the media text that, that is a printed text during those time, you can also eventually you know explore, uh, use, use these as tools to find out what kind of culture was there in 15th century Europe, particularly 15th century England. Next we move on to the 16th and 17th centuries and we find that the 16th and 17th centuries, the printing press lay, you know uh, further uh, produced periodicals and newspapers. 
So, there were not any newspapers really before this time. Okay. So, newspapers are a media form all of you are aware of that. Okay. Uh, newspapers and uh, periodicals right. These were produced um, you know after the printing press uh, revolution really began and in the 17th and 18th century the media forms that were added to the hitherto existing books were or pamphlets or periodicals and newspapers. In the 19th century we had um, you know we had these media forms really becoming industries right. So, we find look at the slide here please in the 19th century we had the book and newspaper industries and um, the a phenomenal increase uh, really in the reading public okay the the number of people who were reading and also uh, this is tied to you know the uh, those of you who do social history cultural history would uh, not find it difficult to relate to the fact that this these industries were growing why because there was the availability of leisure time people had the time to read books people had the time uh, to read newspapers more and more people were reading newspapers and books okay women all you know um, in the 18th and 19th century in england you will find a phenomenon a cultural phenomenon where women were also uh, you know um, formed a different segment okay, of reading. So, in the 19th, and century, uh, 19th century we had book and newspaper uh, industries and then in the 20th and the 21st centuries we have this you know uh, uh, we had this new uh, radically new form which is the electronic media and the new media. Okay. Uh, I shall uh, uh, div uh, uh, devote a whole lecture to new media a couple of lectures from now, but you see that uh, media also like other cultural forms have a history and the his history of cultural forms again forms a sub domain of cultural studies. So, in the 20th and 21st centuries electronic media and new media are completely you know going to if not completely are going to add a wholly new dimension okay, a radically new dimension to media. So, um, Durham and uh, uh, Minakshi Durham and Douglas Kellner's uh, Media and Cultural Studies, which is um, a very important, very useful um, edited volume, which brings uh, writers as diverse as you know, in time at least as as uh, Karl Marx and uh, Joao Baudrillard and Mark Poster, right? And from areas relating to globalization, to political economy, to semiotics, to feminism. So, in their introductory um, piece on uh, you know on in the book, this is what they say, and let us read from here, and I shall explain. It is increasingly clear that media and culture today are of central importance to the maintenance and reproduction of contemporary societies. Okay. Media and culture all, all other cultural forms help enable you know the reproduction of con contemporary societies. Societies like species need to reproduce to survive and culture activates attitudes and behavior that predispose people to consent to established ways of thought and conduct thus integrating this is very important integrating individuals to a specific socio economic system. Okay. How, why do we think think alike about certain things? Why uh, what is the commonality in us? Why is it that we can speak from a certain platform we understand one another even though uh, many of our beliefs may be different many of our thoughts may be different um, uh, you know there are segments of people who uh, who think in different ways, but still there is the way we can communicate. Douglas um, Kellner and Minakshi Durham believe okay, that it is it is media and other cultural forms that helps to cultivate Okay, in the population um, helps to cultivate certain attitudes and behavior by which we give consent to a certain uh, a certain dominant order okay, to establish as they say ways of thought ways of thinking. Thus, uh, how do you integrate the individual into a system right integrating individuals to a specific socio economic system for instance say capitalism or feudalism. Okay. How do you integrate the people? You will have to give them common that is why we say mass media. The masses are educated. Okay. What is the function of media? The function of media is not simply to entertain. The function of media is to give information okay, and to, to disseminate knowledge among people. Knowledge may not be highly specialized knowledge. Okay. So, what happens is there is a um, there is um, you know there are common things so to speak there is a common pool of knowledge 
okay, from which we, um, uh, from uh, which we derive, you know, a common knowledge that helps us to integrate ourselves into the system. Then they say forms of media culture like television, film, popular music, magazines, and advertising provide. Um, role and gender models. For instance, these again they are not, uh, you know, only as I said for for uh, education, for um, you know, for amusement, for entertainment, and for knowledge. What is important is even as we are enjoying a media product, even as we are enjoying a television serial or you're watching a documentary or the news, what happens is side by side certain models are created, certain models are created of behavior. Okay? For instance, um, if uh, these are all ways of representation, for instance, the good mother, the way the good mother is shown uh, on television, in television advertisements, okay? there you will see that um, there is a certain commonality, right? Um, or in the advertisers sort of advertisers cash in on, on a particular way of showing a mother. A mother is usually young, a mother is usually, uh, you know, usually good looking, a mother is with a child of a certain, uh, certain kind. Of course, the product that is being shown here will determine how it is represented. But if you look next time, if you look carefully at the advertisements, you see how you have a certain kind of woman being presented here. Okay? Also, gender role models, where if, if there is, for instance, um, um, you know, a food product that has been shown. It is usually, uh, if not always, the woman who is shown to be given that fruit drink or given uh, that item of, uh, you, know, for, you know, that food item to the child. It is very rarely that a man is showing. Whenever the husband is shown there or whenever the, you know, uh, the father is shown there, the father is interestingly shown as also enjoying the food with the child. Okay, and commenting on the food that it is good or good, etc. So, what happens by repetition? These are, I may even use the word, bombarded to us all the time, and they make, you know, they create certain role models that a good mother has to be this, a good mother has to be looked like that. And women try and approximate those roles, role, gender roles, and models. So again, let's read forms of media culture like television, film, popular music, magazines and advertising provide role and gender models, fashion hints, right? Fashion hints, lifestyle images and icons of personality, right? Uh, the narratives of media culture offer patterns, look at this, patterns, these are not individual, they do not, these are not tailor made for us, okay? Uh, we are to fit into them. They only give us some patterns, right? And the patterns by being repeatedly represented in, you know, on the screen or in, in, on, in the book. For instance, the Mills and Boone romance, which in our time was, uh, you know, a very common um, kind of novel that we, we read. The Mills and Boone romances uh, uh, kind of interpolated or beckoned out to the reader, okay, to produce a certain kind of woman and a certain kind also of man. Okay? So, it is not simply television, but also books that can or genres, particular genres that can create, um, you know, uh, that can help create models to which many people aspire. So, the narratives of media, media culture offer patterns of proper and improper behavior. What is, even what is proper behavior and what is improper behavior, these are also sought to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, these are also learned by us from the media products. So, the narratives of media culture offer patterns of proper and improper behavior, even moral messages and ideological conditioning. So, the way you are going to look at the world, perceive the world, these are also being taught to you by the media pro products. Okay? Then what they do, let us read on from here, sugar coating social and political ideas with pleasurable and seductive forms of popular entertainment. Popular entertainment um, with these very attractive images, what they do is ultimately they, they also serve, remember what Adorno and Horkheimer had said, said that the culture industry and their forms, what, what do they do? They only perpetuate and maintain the capitalist order. Okay? In the same way here, we find that um, these, uh, these media forms, they sugarcoat social and political ideas with pleasurable and seductive forms of popular entertainment. For instance, any ideology that you are going to read as a scholar, okay, 
uh, that may be either shown to you in a positive light or that may be uh, sort of shown to you in a parodic form by these uh, so called sugar coated media items. Therefore, culture as um, they say Kellner, um, Kellner and uh, Durham say culture is ordinary a familiar part of everyday life, yet special cu cultural artifacts are extraordinary. One of the main things that we uh, that has remained with us and which I highlighted in the first two lectures in module 1 is that culture as understood in, in cultural studies as a discipline, it, culture is not you know uh, culture is not dance or music people usually say usually when they say a cultural program they mean dance or theater or whatever. Culture is certainly as you know by now not understood in that light in cultural studies. Culture is everyday life, culture is the ordinary everything that is happening around all the time okay? that is what culture is, culture is about everyday practices. So, they say that culture is ordinary a familiar part familiar part of everyday life, yet special cultural artifacts are extraordinary. Why are they extraordinary? They are extraordinary in the sense that they help people to see and understand things they have never quite perceived like certain novels or films that this is important change your view of the world. How many times you may have thought or even told your friend that this, this particular film or this particular book changed, it was a landmark you know experience for me, it changed my life. So, we use phrases like this okay, or it, it gave me a new gave me new life for instance right. So, special cu cultural artifacts again these are media forms right, your everyday practices um, are the practices that you you know uh, uh, that you go through. Media is of course, a part of everyday practices, but then these artifacts these cultural forms are made they are produced right they they are uh, a result of the production process okay so they uh, are in that sense extraordinary and many a book and many a film have really also affected us so much that we even say that they have these have changed our um, changed um, changed our, us or changed our lives fine so i would like to draw your attention to um, John Ernie's essay. This essay is in uh, the edited volume, as I said, Media and Cultural Studies by um, Minakshi Durham and Douglas Kellner. And the essay is entitled Media Studies and Cultural Studies A Symbiotic Convergence. Okay? And after talking in general a bit in general about media, we are now trying to see again as I said we are doing a cultural studies analysis right, we are trying to find out the relation of cultural studies, we are trying to see how cultural studies looks at media right. So, this essay is in that sense uh, throws a great deal of light uh, on this media studies and cultural studies a symbiotic convergence. Now, he points to the commonalities between media studies and cultural studies in that he says there are three common things that are shared by media studies and cultural studies. Remember, we are already making a distinction between media studies and cultural studies. Okay? We have to remember this. Uh, cultural studies cannot swallow up media studies, media studies cannot swallow up cultural studies. We begin by accepting that fact and then we go on to say that there is a convergence nevertheless between media studies and cultural studies. So, the commonalities between media studies and cultural studies are one that there is a mutual accessibility. There is a mutual accessibility in the sense that both you know the areas of study, the concerns of cultural studies, the forms that they uh, that it looks at and media um, uh, and the forms in media okay, there you know each can access the other in, in, in fact that is the discourses are common and e, e, each you know e media studies can comment on cultural studies and cultural studies can comment on media studies. Second there are shared methods. Let me give you an example for instance uh, as a methodology Marxism right Marxism you know is one of the theoretical schools of cultural studies. In the same way there is a very strong Marxist school in media studies right. So, once you have a common platform for instance semiotics it is not that semiotics is not a part of media uh, studies, but semiotics is also a part of cultural studies okay. Feminism in media studies, feminism in cultural studies, ethnography 
on uh, uh, and even ethnicity in both. Okay, so you find that there are many common areas, but you know uh, each of these uh, two domains would like to sort of demarcate their boundaries and say that no, we are not exactly the same. The second is shared methods and as I said, uh, you know there are you know both of these uh, both these uh, concerns share the same uh, methodology to a large extent. Then production and reception of cultural texts and commodities. Uh, the way texts, uh, you know, the way texts are produced and the way they are received by audiences, right? The cultural texts, commodities, uh, they are also similarities as far as the discourse is concerned, or at least there they are convergences between media studies and cultural studies. Therefore, we uh, may also safely say, after Ernie, that cultural studies has. Uh, if we can say that media studies comes before cultural studies as a domain, then we can also after Ernie claim this that cultural studies uh, has reconfigured media studies. Okay, this is an important point. We just a while we ago we saw that there are convergences, there are very similar, uh, some very strikingly similar things between cultural studies and media studies, but we have to see that with the coming in of cultural studies, media studies has also been reconfigured or undergone change. For instance, the first point if you look at this slide, the first point here is semiological criticism which may have been a part of part of um, media studies okay, gains, um, gains more place now in media studies. Okay. Why? Because you know that semiotics or study of science, science its systems and signifying practices, they are immensely uh, important, they, they are uh, you know they form so to speak a part of the bedrock of cultural studies right. If you remember um, our initial lectures and what happens is in this reconfiguration of media studies by cultural studies, uh, semiological criticism or criticism based on media and the signs of media products, this ha is, uh, is, um, this is occupying more space so, uh, so to speak in mainstream media studies. Secondly, identity based media studies, one we saw was uh, to do with the sign, the second is there is an increase in media studies. Uh, which which look at which uh, you know which uh, different areas which look at how identity is constructed by these media forms. If you really look at uh, older ways of media analysis and media forms, a huge uh, one on one on one and the huge part of it has behind it a clearly uh, you know, if I may use the word a classical Marxism right uh, based on the the classical base and superstructure. Right, uh, superstructure architecture, where media is seen as a part of uh, part of um, uh, a, a part of the superstructure. Okay, but it is not that that kind of study hasn't gone. But uh, I would say that you know, even a semiological criticism of media or an identity-based um, media criticism, criticism that looks at media representation for instance, okay, will make this political economy approach to media studies uh, the richer. Do you understand for uh, as I, as I uh, have always felt that whenever you make a clearly structuralist or a deconstructed deconstructionist um, analysis of uh, media forms, okay. we cannot stop only at doing that analysis, we would have to say why this analysis came or, or why this sort of propensity or why this trajectory came about okay, in the media form in the first place. right? So, mass media studies then uh, we may uh, say is enriched by, a stud, uh, by cultural studies in the fact that the politics of popular culture, this is important, okay. the politics of popular culture is further the power in the politics of uh, um, popular culture um, is highlighted by cultural studies and also the structural and historical aspects of media and, and uh, the you know remember talking about consent, how you know in order to be integrated into a socio economic particular socio economic system what happens is that the individual 
okay, uh, you know, has these forms that beckon to him or her to consent to the dominant order. So, we also find that cultural studies has strengthened studies of hegemony, okay, studies of manufactured consent as far as media studies is concerned. Therefore, if we were to say uh, or if we were to delineate uh, the scope of media studies, then we would say that the scope of media studies after it has after it has been sort of impacted by or after it has been affected by cultural studies methodologies after the symbiosis so to speak uh, today looks at text looks at media text now in when we say media text we are uh, talking of a text in the sense of it being a signifying system okay so that even um, even something you watch every day which is the news right uh, whether or you if you are still a radio buff you are listening to a news item okay on the radio right that news item that you watch on television or you are listening to on the radio what happens is that becomes a text to be decoded and cultural studies semiological criticism gives you know scholars the tools by which they can analyze uh, a media text okay, with a lot of dexterity. Then political economy as I had said it, it uh, was there before and it is still a very uh, uh, it is a very important part of the scope of, of um, cultural studies of media. Then the relationship between text and audiences, the audi audience studies are increasingly becoming uh, very very important concurrently with the semiological approach that looks at text, the reception of media and uh, you, know, go, you know we do away with the older school of thought where the audience is just a passive receiver of the media message okay, or the media the communicating media form. Okay. Today we also as we, as we shall see even in the lecture on television as we shall see today what has um, uh, uh, what is happening is you know we are talking about segmented audiences we are talking about audiences that have different needs we are uh, you know looking at different um, uh, even uh, age segments for instance the what programs the young look for what programs the old or the middle age look for okay so the relationship between text and audiences is another part of the scope of media and cultural studies convergence and finally uh, but not uh, uh, the last the wider patterns of cultural meaning now if if you if the text tell us about meaning then we are also looking at the wider patterns of meaning through the political economy particularly the political economy or the feminist approach or you know the uh, the, uh, the approach is based on race for instance okay we are looking for wider socio cultural patterns there not just semiological meaning patterns this is very important for us okay Otherwise, we will simply be doing micro level studies, right. So, we are looking for cultural meaning, wider patterns of cultural meaning that can tell us a lot about the, the background okay, of the, that is the political economy of production, distribution and consumption and the relationship between text and audience. This is also part of the wider patterns of cultural meaning that arise. Fine. Therefore, the cultural studies focus on media have to put it in another way have to do with ideologies have to do with identity with cultural hegemony with textual meanings and polysemy polysemy is um, po poly means many that is many meanings okay meanings that come up um, are given to us by an increasingly heterogeneous audience like many meanings coming from many different kinds of audiences and of course time how time uh, space and routines and patterns of you know behavior and patterns of life in the family in particular are woven around the media okay how time space and routine are uh, in uh, you know are affected by uh, the media for instance when you watch your favorite program your favorite program takes up that time okay it becomes a routine for you becomes routinized practices okay your space and time and root uh, practices are determined by media to a certain extent therefore whereas you know originally we would talk about media as power okay we find that increasingly people are talking about please look at the slide here people are talking about media as resource okay on in the first um, 
format, we had uh, this sort of an idea that well media is all powerful and media is uh, media are going different media forms are going to create the audience is going, going to create desire in the audience much in the way in which Adorno and Horkheimer if you remember in their deliberations on culture industry on remember all those points of similarity of sameness of mass deception right all these things are there but we we'll see that there is a shift to media as resource okay so media is now today a res people people uh, can resist media people can see so to speak through the representation people can see uh, uh, through the message and they can use media as a resource in quite a different way than it was uh, you know probably envisioned earlier okay the as i said the idea of the passive consumer of media products no longer holds right today audiences are well informed audiences can even uh, you can even file uh, you know a public um, interest litigation against a particular media item or program or text if you think that it is uh, not uh, quite right to for a, for a channel to be showing a certain program or a book to be uh, you know forwarding a certain point okay so uh, what did we see here we saw that media as a form of power today is uh, of course it's there but as i said there is a shift there is a shift um, with a thematic shift to media as resource as used by people uh, then i would like to point to uh, an essay by Dallas Smith, which is in the same book, in the same collection. And this is a very important concept of what is called audience commodity or audience work, right. Now, you must be wondering how does audience become a commodity and how do audiences work? After all, audiences do not work. Work is something we leave behind when we come to media. We come for leisure, we come for pleasure okay, and for entertainment. But let us look at what uh, Smith has to say and what are the formulations he makes on audience commodity, the concept of audience commodity and audience work. To suggest that the mass media, mass media audience is a commodity and that audiences work is to raise many questions which unsettle established ways of thinking. He's, he, he admits the fact that, the, you know, as I said a while earlier, how, how, is, you know, how can audience ever be a commodity and how can audiences quote unquote work, right? Now, he goes on to say, as most audience work centers in the home, now this is why this is invisible, right? Audience work is invisible because it happens in, you know, uh, it is situated usually to a large extent in the home. As most audience work centers in the home, all the other functions of the family, look at this, all the other functions of the family become involved in considering the implications of the proposition focus on, you know, of the proposition and focus on the family. In order to analyze a largely commoditized society, we must beware thinking of people and commodities as disconnected. You know, people, we normally, what is the idea we have? Here is a commodity in front of me, here is a commodity particularly say on the shelf in the market, in the mall in front of me and I am an agent, I am a subject and I am buying the commodity. The commodity is not me and I am not the commodity, okay. But Smith and others of this school of the audience commodity and audience work school of thought, you know, in cultural studies and media studies, they point to the fact that, you know, we must be, must uh, be aware and alert to the fact that there is a tendency to disconnect, to show a disconnect between people and commodities, right. We have to see them as the slide shows here, relationships in a social process. So, media forms, media commodities, okay, media items, media texts are not separate from people. Okay. There is a relationship between, you know, um, uh, between people and the commodities that they purchase and we shall see in a while how, right. Now, how does media, um, how does media affect, so to speak, how uh, that is uh, how is media, how does media come into the home you know that the home is uh, as, as said by smith the home is the site or the locale where audience commodity and audience work happens now he says that for instance marital relations marital relations are affected by media products okay 
uh, when uh, so that's what so that if you think that you are uh, a person who is consuming okay you're paying for the channel so you are a consum consumer you are buying uh, you know these media items okay and you're consuming it and if you see think that you're just uh, you know you're relaxing and you're simply being entertained by it it doesn't seem to be so right audience work is involved in the sense that you have to what whatever you are enjoying you are also in the back of your mind working it out right uh, there are comparisons being made there are um, issues that crop up right and therefore the audience in that sense has to has to work right leisure in the same way leisure activities consumer expenditure child care and development and decision making these are the different domains which are affected you know by um, affected by uh, you know the affected by the media as far as aspects of home and family life are concerned okay and it is wrong as smith says rightly you should be aware of the fact that people and commodities in this case commodities of mass media that they are separate okay there is a relationship uh, between them next as far as audience studies is concerned you know even if you even if you do empirical studies uh, of audience and you, you select a certain sample or you do a survey you know, of how audiences you know a particular segment for instance uh, how a middle class um, how the middle class in a particular place okay how uh, you know uh, how they respond to uh, a media product uh, there is also you know even in those studies it's not about how many hours a week do you uh, you know watch television or what are your the programs that you watch and you know uh, who has control over uh, the remote etc the apart from such statistical questions okay the shift is in audience studies today towards and this is clearly a uh, clearly something that has been contributed by cultural studies okay so there is a shift and this shift centers around issues of subjectivity and identity okay how uh, what is what happens to subjectivity of individuals when they peruse media products right what how do people construct and reconstruct identities based on media forms how do audiences resist the ways in which some media forms seek you know advertising for advertisement for instance seek to create the identity okay some advertisements are like mirrors right in which you are supposed to see yourself if you do not see yourself in that particular garb and form and structure you know then uh, or that look uh, you are you have fallen behind or other you are not up to the mark for that okay so issues of subjectivity and identity again are not in the narrow sense understood as things that are formed by the media okay things that are uh, over what over which media forms have control okay we also have the audience uh, answering or say speaking back if you will okay to the media forms so uh, in this sense we have a school of um, thought or one orientation in media studies which is called user the users and gratification the users and gratification um, um, school of thought where which says that issues of subjectivity and identity okay uh, are to do with you know the, are also tied in with the users of media forms of media text okay they also also you know they are about uh, the gratification and satisfaction okay that are um, that we receive from media forms in that for instance look at this slide here please uh, as users and gratification one of the ways is that definitely there is a withdrawal it helps you escape from certain pressure from certain pressures even if in the end it doesn't you know act as a complete escape from you know from work from drudgery remember that kind of theory doesn't hold anymore because you already have a whole school of thought saying that it is audience work right and we also saw in i think adorno's um, and hawkheimer's essay in the first lecture 
of this module that you know entertainment can also be boring. Entertainment is also a prolo leisure, it is a prolongation of work, okay, because it is the same, uh, same socio-economic setup that is reprodu reproduced and maintained so to speak largely by these media forms. Okay. So, there is at least a, then uh, an illusion if you will of escape or withdrawal which is very gratifying to people and uh, personal relationships and social interaction are also part of the uses of media. Why? Because when you as I said when you when you watch uh, you know we will talk more about this probably when you talk about television. When you watch a program, when you read a book, usually you do not keep it to yourself. These are motivations for conversation, motivations for social, for conviviality for instance, right. Okay. So, personal relationships can also be affected and you put media forms to use, you put media forms to use for uh, you know your personal relationships and social interaction and personal identity and values right are also under the schema of the users and in, in the sense of formation of identity and definitely media has a very very powerful um, you know what is that what, what should I use a very it is a very powerful tool for the creation of values. It is not that we completely negate and we are alert and we say no no now I am going to watch a program and I am not going to. Uh, not going to take the values of the program. Program, after all, it's an interpolation. It's a seduction. Okay, it is packaged in a certain way. It's part of the capitalist system. It is never as simple as that. Though many would, may would want it to be like that. We are always in a sort of dialogue, and if you may will, a dialectical relationship with media forms and ourselves. Okay, we build on what media uh, uh, give us. We revise them, resist them, but the we do not completely, we do not completely I feel do not really negate these things. Okay. So, part of the users and gratification schema of, of media products um, which is a very rich area of study. Okay. Uh, this also includes what a study of what is, what is hidden in the very process of users and gratification. Then I would like to end with the point about taste cultures. Okay. Now, uh, certainly, if, you, if you, you just have to look around and see how many television channels are there not only in your own place, not only nationally, but also internationally uh, you know you can see the, 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 the amount the increase in you know uh, the, um, the number of media forms that are available to us. So, what happens in that case is there is a growing competition and with the lower costs of production what happens is these highly different you know highly different channels and you know for instance you have channels today on only on travel you have chan uh, channels on food okay you have channels on education you have channels uh, uh, you know to do with various forms of entertainment uh, you have channels which are for children we have the cartoon channels right so what happens is with the proliferation of media forms right i'm talking about television here but it's also also applies to all other media forms like book films books films etc now with the availability of more kinds of films for instance and more kinds of books we have taste cultures that are developing okay this is also a cultural studies contribution to media studies there are taste cultures that are developing and we shall see that these new let's look at this these new taste cultures um, are highly segmented Okay. For instance, ethnicity, you may have programs that are never watched by you, right? you have never stopped at that channel, okay? whereas there are channels which you know others do not watch, but you watch with a lot of you know uh, avidness. Right? So, ethnic, um, ethnicity could be one point, for instance an ethnic group may be, uh, may have a um, uh, propensity for watching certain kinds of pro programs which uh, show their own ethnic cultures for instance and also as uh, a person who does not belong to a particular ethnic group. For instance, you may be, uh, you may be very interest in, interested in knowing about a community right? and, to, and you go on to a certain channel to you know to watch what that community is like, what their culture is like, what their intellectual forms are like. Okay? In the same way age is another segment. 
or rather another taste culture. Different age groups have different, definitely have different taste cultures. Not everybody watches MTV and not everybody watches um, the yoga channels, right? So, uh, with new taste cultures are forming and there is really this, you would say this fragmentation and this creation of ever new and you know micro levels of, of taste cultures. Then genres, of course, people go by genres, by types of uh, types of um, uh, media products, education is another uh, determiner here, gender and work rhythms. For instance, those who work the, in the daytime and those who work, whose work entails working in the night time, okay. then their work rhythms are different and their taste cultures are different. Though I must add here, with the coming in of uh, the facility of recording, Okay, in uh, you know these cable providers give you facilities for recording uh, programs that you may watch in, in other times. This work rhythm factor may not today hold uh, uh, you know for very long and also political orientation. Political orientation may lead you to watch certain channels and not others. For instance, you also have uh, you know uh, channels that are to do with as I said to do with religion. Okay, so, those who are of a religious orientation uh, will peruse those channels. Okay. This is again not to say that the young do not look at some channels or that men do not look at other channels, but that seems to be the scenario here. Therefore, let us go to the discussion and very quickly a couple of questions, how have media forms changed historically? Okay. We found that media forms, it is not that uh, you know a uh, mass media, though uh, today mass media may have a huge you know uh, along with new media, okay, there is really an explosion where they, the audience is very diverse, very different, enormous in number. However, we may go back to the 15th century with the beginning of the printing press and then moving on to the 16th and 17th centuries where uh, you know to the previous uh, books and uh, manu you know uh, sorry pamphlets were added periodicals and newspapers on various topics. In the 19th century books and newspapers became industries. Okay, became industries in order to cater to a growing reading public and in the 20th and 21st centuries we had electron we have electronic media and the new media you know uh, to do with which is a digital media on which I shall be you know uh, devoting a whole lecture in a couple of lectures from now. Then outline the relationship between media studies and cultural studies this is an uh, perhaps our most important point and we go by John Ernie in saying that there are commonalities between media studies and cultural studies even as these two domains try uh, you know to quite zealously really to retain their boundaries and to say that uh, for instance media studies would say that cultural studies we are not followed up by cultural studies. Okay. So, we, we accept that and we say that there are convergences. Okay. Convergences which uh, talk about mutual accessibility of areas okay, of discourses from one to other and there are shared methods. And I have given you the example of political economy math method for instance and today of the semiological uh, approach of identity based criticism which are shared by both media and cultural studies and the production and reception of cultural texts and commodities, commodities and media being a cultural text definitely this is one uh, almost you could say an overlapping area in media and cultural studies. Cultural studies it is claimed has reconfigured media studies in that cultural studies has come a little later institutionalized cultural studies has come a little later perhaps in media studies and therefore, has with its coming there is a reconfiguration of media studies in the sense that there is increasing importance on the politics of the sign, the power structures involved in the sign in the media text and there is also interest in identity based criticism and this key word in cultural studies this key concept that is representation. Okay how are things represented in the media. This is how if, if, if you zoom in on one area this is it. Therefore, mass media studies today talk about the politics of popular culture, the historical and structural aspects and also hegemony in newer ways. Then this what are the specific concerns of cultural studies as far as media is concerned? The special concerns are to do with ideologies identity, cultural hegemony, textual meanings and polysemy and of time, space and routines as our live lives are concerned. So, well I hope uh, I was able to at least tell you or show you some of the ways in which cultural studies 
uh, and media studies converge some of the ways in which cult cultural studies has has you know thrown um, or thrown open new areas okay particularly the as i said the politics of the sign semiology okay polysemy and uh, you know uh, newer forms of political economy studies right so these uh, with uh, you stay with this and uh, we are going to talk about uh, television and new media in the next few lectures uh, followed by cyber culture and uh, therein also we will see how cultural studies has uh, you know helped us okay in developing a discourse and the methodology thank you so much